Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. So for me, it is now 11 weeks before my average last frost date. I am at uh, March 11th. <laughs> and uh, so I'm actually about 11 and a half weeks past uh, before my average last frost date. So um, I've had requests to see the calendar. This is my calendar I use for my vegetables. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a better shot of it so you can actually read it. But uh, this just outlines I have down the side, I've put the weeks before my average last frost date. I've just handwritten them down the side of each week. Um, technically this year, because my average last frost date is like about May 24th, and I think that technically lands on a Wednesday, but I just put it down the side and note that's that week I kind of treat as, as the average week for that date. Um, and then I just have written in what uh, seeds I'm hoping to get started that week uh, in relation to my average last frost date. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll let you have a little look at it, like I said, uh, to help you if you have a similar average last frost date, then you can have a peek at that and just see some people are asking to, to see it, to know if they were kind of on track with what I was thinking, especially if it's their first year gardening. So hopefully that will help. Um, so anyways, as my 11 weeks before my average last frost date, I want to plant my celery and my onions and some parsley this week. So those are all things that um, often you'll find on the seed packs that they say six to eight weeks before your average last frost date is when you should be planting them, or some will even say to direct sow. But uh, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada. I have about 110 days of uh, frost-free growing time in my area. So some of these things I like to get started just a little bit earlier, especially in the case of parsley and celery. I like to start them just that few weeks earlier because they can sometimes take a really long time to germinate and get going. Um, so, and they're not like super fast growers even once they do go. So I, I like to get them started a little bit earlier um, so that if I have, I have time if I need to, to uh, go back and reseed. But usually it's just a matter of waiting like a month or more sometimes for germination to happen with those seeds. So I'll get into that more in a minute, but um, what I'm planting today is the giant of Italy parsley. These are from Incredible Seeds. There's no sponsorship with any of these seed companies, but people often ask also um, where I buy my seeds. So Incredible Seeds is where I got these uh, parsley seeds. These are a very large flat leaf Italian parsley. So it's just, it's a nice, a nice parsley that I like to have in my garden. Um, I grow parsley not only to add to dishes, um, but even more so because uh, butterflies and, and caterpillars and that really enjoy parsley and so I always like to have some of that in my garden. Then for my celery, um, I've been growing tango celer celery. I want to say this is the only variety of celery I've grown from seed. Uh, I may have tried another one. I've been growing this for celery from seed for I think about four years now. Always had success that way. Before that, I bought starts at the store. That's another great option with celery, um, with all of these plants, with any plant. Um, but uh, I like growing it from seed, and uh, I have an area to do that, so I can. But anyway, so tango celery. I have two packs. They. This one I think is almost completely empty, and this one might be new. It's hard to tell. Celery seed is fairly small. Um, so this one was from TNT Seeds and this is from Vessi Seeds. And then the onions that I'll be growing um, are actually from Saved Seed, seed that I saved in my garden. Um, so this was, I had a variety of onions out there. I had, um, I think it was called Superstar White. Uh, I had a red onion. I had a yellow candy onion and I actually, I had a few um, like perennial green onions too, but the, it was the, the yellow, the red and the white onions that had gone to seed because I had planted um, very small bulbs that I had stored over the winter and they had started to sprout and I planted those out in the spring um, to get them to go to seed for me last year so that I could collect seed. I did that on purpose. They were in a separate area. Um, on my garden, but I did have them all together. So I'm sure they've cross pollinated and I have no idea what kind of onion I'm gonna get out of it, but that was part of the fun. Onions are cheap, so if these turn out to be 
something odd and wacky or they don't work out for me, I know I can always buy onions at the grocery store and it won't be a big deal. Um, but I just wanted to try this and see how it would go. So I want to start, I think, with the onions. So we'll get these other seeds out of the way just so I don't get them wet. This is my tray for the, uh, the celery and the parsley, so we'll kind of move it to the side as well. So this is my onion container. And um, what I've done here is just taken just like a, a deli tray. I don't know, it probably had some sort of lettuce or vegetables or something in it at some point. And um, I've just filled it with uh, potting soil. Now this, what I have here is just uh, a pots and plants, like a pretty um, low end, I believe, potting soil that I've mixed about a, a four to one ratio of potting soil to perlite um, into this mix. So there's a little bit of, you might see the slightly light brown marks. Those are coco coir and that's just for mixing up my other mix and I got a bit messy, but that's all that is. I've also thoroughly wet it down. I don't know if you can see, it has quite a bit of weight to it. Um, it doesn't need to be this wet, but it, it won't hurt the onions. Um, it's not soap, sopping wet. Like I don't think I could drain water off of it or anything. Um, so it'll be fine for, for the onions. And onions are really easy to sew. Um, so I collected whoop, quite a bit of seed, as you can see. And that's a typical collection of, of onion seeds, quite often this dark color like this. Um, there's a little bit of uh, chaff in there from the onions. Um, but that won't matter. So when I sew my onions in a tray like this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do like kind of a, a small furrow like this. And I'll do another one right close by, maybe a centimeter away. Try and get another, I'd like to try and get four in here. And I'm not going like really, really deep like a quarter to half a centimeter like just just a shallow little um, impression in the soil here and then I'm just gonna sprinkle these like quite quite close together so hopefully you can see like how thickly I'm I'm sewing those you could space them out I just don't concern myself with that for the onions you can see the seeds are plentiful. Even when you purchase them from the store, there's usually lots in a package and onion seeds um, tend not to store um, very well from year to year. So I find, I don't know if I'll be able to get these back in here. I find you get significantly less germination with every year of sowing. So onions is one of the things I like to start with fresher seed from. So there, I just, Dropped a few more in there just randomly as I tried to get that seed back in the envelope. But so these likely um, won't be any good next year anymore. But I've got quite a bit sewn in here. Now, eventually, I'll have to come through and separate these out and thin them a little bit. But it could be like a month after they started growing. They'll start out as really thin wisps like grass and they'll grow quite contentedly very close together like that. Um, so it's fine to sew them close together. Now I would like, I'm gonna grab just a, a very, very small amount of soil just to kind of cover them over a little bit. Just kind of pat those furrows back in. And then I'm gonna go over them with some vermiculite and just try and cover up the soil surface with that. Now the vermiculite will help um, to regulate the moisture at this uh, soil surface here. So it'll absorb excess moisture, but release moisture uh, when the soil starts to dry out. And um, by helping to regulate the, the soil moisture at the, the surface level here, it will also help to deter anything like fungus gnats, fungus, you know, bacterial issues that are happening. Um, so that's always a good thing. And uh, it's fine enough that the seeds can easily push through it. Uh, it's a natural product. 
it's it's fine to be using completely safe for your seeds uh, so that's all I'm gonna do with these I should label them so I guess I should grab some labels just so I know but uh, the way it's sewn I think I would know these were onions and they look very unique to most seeds but that's all there is for sewing onions so I will set these um, I'm not even worried about putting them on a heat mat or anything. I'm just going to put them under my grow lights. It's very warm in my grow room that I grow things in. So I'll just put them on the shelf by the lights. And I mean, they don't even need light until they started to germinate, but that's just where I'm going to set them. So they're out of my way and they'll just sit there and I'll just wait for them to germinate. And like I said, they can stay like this for a very long time um, before I'll ever think about uh, separating them out. And by that time, it might even be warm enough because these don't need to wait for your average last frost. So um, they might even be ready to go out in the garden by the time they're big enough that I'm concerned they're getting crowded because until they start to really start to form a little bit of a bulb at the bottom, you know, just they'll start to swell a little bit in that root zone. That's when uh, they might start to get crowded and you'll find they're drying out all the time. And it's at that point that I would want to move them up into um, like separate them out a little bit. So I will show you when I do that later, but just in case you're curious now, maybe you have some that are ready to go. Uh, the easiest way to do that, if you do need to separate out your onions, I find is to kind of cut out clumps of the soil with onions it will be just a huge root mass. And I like to just kind of um, dip them in a bucket of water or you know a container of water of some sort, kind of rinse off most of the soil, and then I just pull them apart and it'll seem brutal. You'll, you'll break roots, but it won't hurt the onions. And you can do that and just plant them out however you want if you're planting them just into individual spaces of their own or if you're actually getting them out into your garden that's the easiest way to do it so like i said that's all there is to onions um, if they're drying out a lot on top here uh, in the next little while while i'm waiting for them to germinate i will just put a clear lid over this but other than that they're not going to get any special treatment let me find some labels so i don't mix up my parsley and celery because those look very similar when they're early on in life. Okay, so I got my label made here. So I just put onions and I just put my own seed on it because like I said, I don't really know the variety that I'm gonna wind up with here. I don't know if I'll get a few of each variety, if I'll get my own new hybrid variety or what's gonna happen with those, but uh, it's gonna be fun to find out. So get those out of the way. And we'll work on the celery and the parsley. So for the celery and the parsley, I've just used uh, six pack trays. These are just trays that I've collected over the years from plants from the garden center. And um, what I've used for these, this, the mix I've put in here is a little bit different. It's something I'm trying this year. I find to germinate celery and parsley, you need to keep your um, growing medium very, very damp. Uh, celery especially likes really lots of moisture to grow and I find even in the germination and seedling stage and I've found good luck with keeping my parsley very wet as well um, well maybe not wet but quite damp as well um, as I'm trying to get it to germinate like to the point where most seeds I'd be concerned they would rot off that's where I'm keeping my parsley and my celery so with that being said what I've decided to try this year is to use um, a good mixture of cocoa coir in in my trays. If you saw my earlier videos where I was comparing growing mediums, I found the cocoa coir stayed an, a lot more wet and held moisture a lot uh, more than a lot of the other growing mediums that I tried. So I thought it might be a good candidate for seeds like this. Now I didn't use straight up cocoa coir and maybe I could have, but I did mix a little bit again of that pots and plants uh, with the perlite mi mixture, the same thing I used with the onions. And I think, I didn't totally measure it, but I think I probably had probably about three to one, maybe four to one of the cocoa coir to the uh, potting mix. Um, and that's what I've got in here. This one tray I think wound up being a bit more cocoa coir. My bowl maybe could have been a bit bigger that I was mixing in. So I think there's more of the soil <clears throat> in this one and more heavier on the cocoa coir in this one and that's just how it is so i'm not too worried about it <clears throat> i have grown both celery and parsley in straight up potting mix before and it has worked fine like i said you just need to keep it a little bit more on the damp side than you would for for uh, most seeds that are, you're trying to grow let's just start with the uh, tango celery seeds so 
I think I'm going to put the celery in this container because it does prefer more moist conditions uh, all through its growing uh, life here. So I think the one that's a little bit heavier on the cocoa coir is probably my better option for the celery. Uh, they will get transplanted out into the garden, but until they do, they'll have that little bit better conditions. So celery seed is quite small. You might recognize it. It's exactly the same as what you would get if you buy celery seed for your spice cabinet. So um, I'm actually going to put, I have six cells here, but I'm going to sprinkle, I don't know, four to six seeds probably in each, each little spot here. And I might have enough with just that package. In fact, I have just a few here, so I'm just going to go and just kind of add the rest over this package because the other one I think is a brand new package so I may as well not open it but this one I've had for many years so it's probably time to use the seed up anyway <clears throat> so we'll just save this other packet for another year so you can see I just put it right on the soil surface and all I'm going to do is put a real thin layer again of the vermiculite on top celery doesn't want to have to work really hard to push through a soil layer so it just wants you know a little bit of a cover but not much and I think the cover I, sus oops, I suspect is probably more for helping maintain moisture on those seeds than anything else. I'm just going to go through and give a gentle little tap just to make sure that the seed has all made contact with the growing medium. Put my celery label in here and I'm going to water it really well. So I'll actually probably give that a chance to soak in a bit and then I'll give it another good spray. So parsley is just a little bit different in how you grow it compared to the celery. Um, so I'm going to actually be making little holes. So it says about half an inch deep, which would be about one centimeter. So I'm going, I just have a, like a bamboo skewer and it has a pointed edge there. So I'm just going kind of to where the, the sharpening or, or point starts. That's about how deep I'm trying to make a little hole. That's my little holes there. So then we just need to get the seed out. And that's what parsley seed looks like. So a little bit bigger than the uh, celery seed, probably slightly smaller than the onion seed. Um, so I am again, I'm going to take about three seeds and put them in the holes. Just again, this is older seed um, and parsley can be finicky. So most things I would probably put like two seeds to the hole. This I'm putting like three or four, they are they are a little bit trickier to get going parsley. Um, so now I'm just going to gently just pat the soil over those holes so that it fills in the hole and covers up the seed. Again, I'm going to go over with the vermiculite. This I'll do a little bit of a heavier layer. I'm just kind of spread it around. Pop my tag in there and then I'll go in and water it again. Just like the celery, I'm going to put a very heavy layer of water in here and I will actually put a little bit of water in the bottom of this dish, this tray that uh, these, these two uh, cell packs are sitting in. I will keep a little bit of water in the bottom of those. But first, I want to water these actually until I see water coming out the bottom. I wasn't exaggerating when I said that, like, I want these seeds quite wet. Like, I wouldn't do this with, I don't think, anything else that I grow. And the cocoa coir came dehydrated, and I did obviously rehydrate it um, before mixing it, but I want to make sure that it's not going to take any moisture out of, away from the seeds here either. Uh, it's not something that I very familiar with using to grow with so 
let's see. Yeah, so we're starting to get some water coming out of the bottom of there. And a little bit out of the bottom there. It looks like this corner might not be as wet, so I'm just gonna. So I am going to treat these plants pretty much the same way uh, for this part of their lives or they're germinating and starting to get going. So really it's about average room temperature. Um, 70 degrees or a little bit higher is what these want to germinate. The onion's the same thing, but I already went through that I think with you. Um, so they don't need light to germinate, but as soon as they've started to germinate, I will expose them to light. Because they, these like such high humidity, I don't know if this is gonna be large enough. Oh, it might work out. So I'll put this little dome over them just to keep some humidity in there um, and keep lots of moisture so it's not evaporating as much. Once I see germination happening, I like to wait till there's about 80% germination in my trays. And once that happens, I remove the dome to make sure the plants are getting enough air circulation. That goes for anything that I'm growing. And I always have a fan going in my uh, grow room so that uh, plants are having some air movement, which helps keep um, fungal issues down and it also helps to strengthen the plants. Keep your parsley and your celery quite damp uh, throughout that process of germinating. And they will probably, even with the vermiculite, start to get kind of some green algae and things on there and that's okay. You don't want fungus, you don't want mold. Um, if you do see those things, you could sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon or spray them with a really strong chamomile tea helps to keep down um, some of that more bad like bacterial type things uh, but a little bit of green algae that's okay and it's probably going to happen if you're keeping them wet enough uh, but yeah so that's all there is to it they're, they're a little bit trickier to get going so onions super easy to grow parsley and celery just a little bit a uh, little bit more difficult uh, but I think these are things that anyone can grow with the right knowledge and patience. The onions can take a few weeks to get going. These like a month easy to see germination in them. So don't give up hope. Don't think you did it wrong. Um, and the celery and the onions can both, um, I tend to plant them out. Uh, the onions up to a few weeks before my average last frost date, the celery can go outside usually um, like a week or around like a week before or right around my average last frost date. The parsley, I uh, I think it technically can go out and be out, you know, about a week, about the same time as the, the celery, but I tend to just hold on to it longer. I don't know why, it just seems more delicate, I guess. Um, yeah, so that's all I do to grow these plants. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.